Hello and welcome back. In this video I want to talk about something called graphical analysis. And this is when we use the graph of something like the position versus time or the velocity versus time to extract some additional information such as the change in an object's position or the velocity that the object is moving at. So I want to start out with something simple and consider what happens when an object's moving with a constant velocity. So if we consider the position versus time graph, remember velocity is change in position over change in time. So looking at this graph, position is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis, so change in position over change in time, that's change in y over change in x, and that's equal to the slope. So when an object moves with a constant velocity, we have a constant slope, so you have a straight line with a constant slope and the slope of this line is equal to your velocity. So let's look at a simple example. Here I'm giving you the position versus time for some object and I ask you to calculate the velocity and displacement for each one of these three segments here. So for the first segment, my change in position, you can see here I start out at zero, I end up here which is five miles, so my change in position was 5 miles. Now velocity, that's delta x over delta t, this is going to be equal to 5 miles divided by, and my delta t here is 10 minutes. Now if I want to write this in miles per hour, I'd multiply this by 60 minutes over 1 hour, I put the minutes in the numerator so it cancels with the minutes in the denominator here. A 10 cancels with that zero here. We've got five times six, so this is 30 miles per hour. For segment two here, well I start out at this point which is five miles and I end with the same y value, right? I end at the same position, five miles. So delta x is zero miles right? My y value never changed. Velocity is delta x over delta t, so again we can see this is going to be zero miles per hour. Again remember, velocity is equal to your slope. Here I've got a horizontal line, right? My y value never changed, so my slope was equal to zero. For the last segment here, we've got to be a little bit careful. Delta x, remember delta x is x final minus x initial. Well, my final position is down here on the x-axis. So this is zero. My initial position is up here. It's five miles. So delta x is minus five miles. So velocity is delta x over delta t. That's equal to, let me go down here, uh, it's going to be minus five miles divided by, if we look here, my delta t is this ten minute segment plus half of 10 minute segment, so that's 15 minutes. If I want to write this in miles per hour, I'd multiply this by 60 minutes over one hour. 60 divided by 15, that's four. Five times four, that's 20 miles per hour. So my velocity is minus 20 miles per hour. Now notice that the velocity here is negative. Remember, velocity is equal to the slope. Looking here at this graph, we can see my slope is in fact negative, right? I am decreasing. my The value of my position is decreasing in time. So my slope is negative. So this is the position versus time graph. What if I plot the velocity versus time graph? Well, if my velocity is constant, then the y value is never changing. So it's not a very interesting graph here, right? It's just I have a constant line, a constant value for y. <clears throat> so let's move on now and talk about what happens when you have a constant acceleration. Well, if I plot the position versus time, it's going to be a bit complicated. Remember that the position versus time, I'm sorry, the position uh, formula, we found this as a kinematic formula, is 1 half a delta t squared plus v naught delta t. So if I plot position versus time, I'm going to wind up with some kind of quadratic formula. It's going to look like this. Okay. So 
Uh, we, we, we talked about this when we talked about free fall motion. I showed uh, several different graphs of the position versus time, so you're already familiar with the symmetry that can appear and this idea that it's going to be quadratic. Now one thing I didn't include in this slide, I really should have, is what happens if we plot the velocity versus time. Well, remember acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. If I plot velocity versus time, well velocity is my y-axis, time is my x-axis. So change in velocity over change in time, that's change in my y-value over change in my x-value. Remember change in y over change in x is slope. So if my acceleration is constant, then my velocity versus time graph has a constant slope, so it's a straight line, and the value of this slope here tells me my acceleration. So now I want to move on to a bit of a tricky example. And in this example, I'm giving you the velocity versus time. It's broken up into three segments here. And I'm going to ask us to calculate the displacement, so how far does the object travel during each one of these segments. So remember, we can calculate displacement using this equation here. Delta x is 1 half a delta t squared plus v naught delta t. So to use this, I have to calculate my acceleration, my initial velocity, and delta t. Or not calculate, but get this information from the graph. So looking here, I can see my initial velocity, that's this point down here, is 0 meters per second. Delta t is 1 second. And my acceleration, remember this is delta v over delta t. My velocity changes by 5 meters per second, right? I start out down here, I end up up here at 5 meters per second. And delta t is 1 second, so my acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. Now if I plug all of these values into this formula here, we have this is 1 half. Actually, let me simplify this a little bit. This is delta v over delta t is my acceleration times delta t squared plus, and this term is going to go to zero, so actually I don't have to worry about that. And I can simplify this a little because here I've got a delta t in the denominator and I've got two of these delta t's here. So this delta t in the denominator for the acceleration cancels with one of the delta t's here for the delta t squared. And we have this as one half delta v delta t. So delta v was 5 meters per second. Uh, delta t is 1, so this is 1 half times uh, 5 meters per second times 1 second. So this is 2.5 meters. So this is my displacement during segment 1. So looking at segment 2, well my initial velocity, that's that point right there, is 5 meters per second. Now, my acceleration is delta v over delta t. Well, my velocity is constant during segment two. It doesn't change. So delta v is zero, so my acceleration is zero meters per second squared. And delta t, looking at this here, so I start out at one, I end at four and a half, so delta t is three and a half seconds. So delta x is one half a delta t squared plus v naught delta t. This time my acceleration is zero, so this term goes to zero. So we just get v naught delta t. v naught's five meters per second. Delta t is three and a half seconds. So let's see, five times three is 15. Five times five is gonna be 2.5. So I'm gonna have 17.5 meters. So this is the change in position during section one, I'm sorry, segment two. So moving on to the very last part, once again delta x is equal to one half a delta t squared plus v naught delta t. And once again I can write this as one half a is delta v over delta t times delta t squared 
plus v naught delta t. And I can cancel one of these delta t's in the denominator with one of these delta t's from the delta t squared. And this is going to equal 1 half delta v delta t plus v naught delta t. Looking here at the graph, I can see my initial velocity was 5 meters per second. Delta v, the change in velocity, well, my final velocity is 10 meters per second. I'm initially moving at 5 meters per second, so my change of velocity is 5 meters per second as well. And delta t, you can hear this is 1, 2, 3 and a half seconds. So here we have 1 half times 5 meters per second times 3 and a half seconds plus 5 meters per second times 3 and a half seconds. So let's see, what is this going to be equal to? So 5 times 3 and a half, this is 15, so this is the, again 17 and a half, this is going to be 17 and a half. 1 half times 17 and a half, so this is going to be equal to, let's see, uh, 26.25 meters. So this is my change in position during segment 3. Now, this is a very important thing that you should uh, take away from this last example, is that during segment 1, when we calculated the change in position, we said this was 1 half a delta t squared, and a is delta v over delta t. We could cancel the delta t with one of these delta t's here. So we cancel one of the delta t's from the acceleration with the delta t squared here. And we got this as 1 half delta v over delta t. So if we look at this graph here, delta v, that's this right here, right? This is the change in my y value. Delta t, this is this over here, right? This is delta t, this is delta v. So 1 half delta v delta t, that is equal to the area of this triangle right here, right? Remember, area of a triangle is equal to 1 half base times height. Looking here, the base of the triangle is delta t, the height is delta v. We've got 1 half base times height. So this formula for delta x was equal to the area under segment 1. Looking at segment 2, we found that the displacement here was just equal to my velocity during this segment, it was always constant, times delta t. So velocity, that's this right here. Delta t, that's this part right here. All right, the area of a rectangle is just base times height. All right, we can see that my displacement here is base delta t times height, v2. So my displacement during segment 2 was again equal to this area here. It was the area under the velocity versus time graph between my initial and final times. Finally, looking at segment 3, it's going to be the same thing, right? So delta x is 1 half a delta t squared. a is delta v over delta t. One of my delta t's from the acceleration cancels with the delta t squared. So we have 1 half delta v delta t plus v naught delta t. v naught delta t, right? This is v naught here. Delta t is this segment right here, so this is v naught. This is delta t over here. So v naught delta t is the area of this yellow rectangle right here. Again, 1 half delta v delta t, well, delta v is height. Delta t is the x part, so we've got 1 half base times height. So this part right here, the acceleration part, is the area of the triangle up here. So again, the change in position for segment 3 was equal to the total area under this line between my initial and final times. So it turns out that any time you're given the velocity versus time graph, the displacement is always equal to the area under the velocity versus time graph between your initial and final times. So this is how you calculate change in position. So from here on out, anytime I ask you to calculate the change in position and I give you velocity versus time graph, you don't have to go through all this complicated stuff we did before where we're calculating the acceleration, and delta t, and initial velocity, and we're plugging into this formula. You can just use the area formulas. So area of a triangle or a trapezoid or a rectangle, you can just use the area formula and calculate the change in position.
So I think I'd like to end the video there. And in the next video, we're going to talk about something called relative velocity, which is how you, ca uh, how you calculate what the velocity will look like when you're in a moving reference frame.